Hey guys, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video, and today I want to make a guide on how to farm Mora. So Mora is the game's legal tender, it's used for almost every form of transaction, purchase, or process, and far be it for me to deny you that you don't need it because yeah, you need a lot. See, early on you might have received a lot of free Mora and have been sitting in the hundreds of thousands for most of your time between Adventure Rank 1 all the way to maybe 25, but by the time you start getting towards the later stages of the game at its current version 1.0, the seemingly infinite supply of funds you had before will start to diminish very rapidly. And that's because things such as enhancing, refining, ascending equipment, leveling up and ascending characters, raising their talents, all of those dramatically increase in price. At the early stages of your time playing Genshin, things may only cost about a thousand, at most maybe fifty thousand, or you might have one purchase here or there that might be in the five digits. The rest anywhere between. However, starting about AR25 or so when you're working on characters and their equipment in the level 50s and 3 to 4 star artifacts, the overall price for enhancements break into the tens of thousands pretty routinely. So that's what today's video is, I'm going to be showing you all the ways you can get your hands on Mora so you can be aware of them as you keep playing. Now I wouldn't necessarily say you'll be starved for it and need to go out of your way, but so long as you keep these in the back of your head your pocket should never really go empty. First, let's talk about all the one-time Mora sources. In exchange for being obtainable only once, these usually give loads of Mora anywhere from some tens of thousands to ludicrous numbers well into the hundreds of thousands. The Spiral Abyss is another domain located in the far east of Mondstadt, where you basically partake in a gauntlet run of battles, with the difficulty of each floor increasing the further down you go. If you haven't been doing this already, and believe me, a lot of people forget to, Spiral Abyss comes with loads of rewards upon completing floors, and if you plan to undertake them around AR30, you should be able to clear up to around floor 5 to 6, maybe even higher if you have the right units and equipment. The Chamber's Bounty will yield you a good amount of Mora if you can get halfway through or further, and the total count if you can complete the entire abyss amounts to 300,000, you know, as well as a ton of other rewards. So get to it, there is no resin cost or any penalty that you can do Spiral Abyss an infinite number of times, it's also a decent source of Primo Gems too. The Experience tab in the Adventure's Handbook is the next one, which you've no doubt been working towards completing since you started the game, but in some cases players actually tend to forget about it. Not only do you receive lots of AR experience, enhancing materials, and even items, but you also get a ton of Mora and Primo gems. The 9 chapters grant you a total of 270,000, but since some of the achievements are locked in Adventure rank, you won't be able to complete Chapter 9 until around AR40, but if you haven't been keeping up on the various tasks, you should get into it since you're missing out on a lot of stuff. While this is technically not fully obtainable without spending money on the game, the Battle Pass is another fantastic way to make bank because every three levels of the Battle Pass unlocked yields huge amounts of Mora and while not required, if you purchase Nostakim you'll get four times the amount of the regular, but even Sojourner's Battle Pass is good enough as is. As long as you do all of the Battle Pass quests every day and the ones every week, you'll be able to make a ton of free Mora. There's kind of been a debate about whether or not it's worth buying the Nostakim Battle Passes, but again, even if you just use the free pass and start breaking into level 30 plus, you'll easily get 60 to 80k every 3 levels. I do believe that you can get about 7 to 8 levels per week. Correct me if I'm wrong on that please? Moving on, the Nameless Treasure Quest may be a tad on the tedious side and it's a little out of your way, but you have to explore the entire world eventually, so I mean, it's a free 100k Mora for something you were gonna do anyway. After you complete the 3 puzzles for the Nameless Treasures, head on over to Linlang, I think that's how you pronounce it, or Lin Lang. it's not Lin Lang, is it? How do you pronounce- <laughs> I need to take a class on Cantonese and Mandarin, oh my goodness. Anyways, just exchange them for a nice bit of AR experience, Primo Gems, and the Sweet Bag. I recommend you do this as soon as possible, but honestly there are more immediate things worth your time, so get those done before this one, I suppose. I believe that's all of the major one-time sources of Mora, so let's move on to the ones you can do indefinitely until the end of time. Initially, Leyline outcrops are a terrible way to use your resin, since early on they give almost nothing. But later on they become a higher quantifiable source of Mora once you reach AR30+, plus, when you're starting to run low because each outcrop will then start to give you about 40k. So if you feel like dedicating a day to restock your checking account, that's over 200,000 in 16 hours worth of resin. In fact, Leyline Blossoms of Wealth are probably the easiest source of Mora past AR35 if you're not in a rush to spend resin on something else. But then again, resin is a very precious and sort of premium resource, so you should only really do this if you're either extremely impatient or if you're in a tight pinch and lack time to get more of some other way. The next one is a pretty obvious one, just to go chest farming. This is much more time consuming than the other methods since it's usually like 2-3 to three hours to find 100 or so chests, but since most chests give about a thousand or more, finding 100 chests will equate to 100 grand. It's sort of one of those things that you may not be doing specifically for Mora because chests are really the only unlimited source of AR experience once you finish all the Archon, World, and Story quests. Trust me, it's not as bad as it looks because you can also get your hands on a ton of artifacts and whatnot so you kill multiple birds with one stone just by doing this. If anything, 
It makes for some awesome sightseeing, and personally, I have a better time chest hunting than I do grinding a single domain for the same amount of time. At least for me, the beautiful scenery and the wonderful landscapes, it definitely makes things a little bit more interesting as opposed to just grinding the same dungeon over and over again where I eventually get bored of whatever colors I'm staring at on the screen for like 2-3 to three hours. While we're on the subject of chests, let's move on to the next one, sigils. So they're an infinite resource too since chests always give anywhere between 1-5 to five animal sigils in Mondstadt and geo sigils in Liwet. Heading over to each town's respective souvenir stores will allow you to spend said sigils on an assortment of items, specifically Mora. There are two selections of Mora, the first that costs only one sigil for 1600 which you can buy 60 for a total of 96,000 and the other that costs two sigils for 1600 which you can buy an endless amount of. Not only are you getting Mora from chests, you're also getting sigils which can turn into Mora as well. Bear in mind though, in order to access the two sigil purchase, you need to have bought everything else in the shop, so it may be a while before you can use this method as a money supply, just something to have in the back of your head though, especially when you're farming a bunch of chests. I should also mention, if you're having a hard time looking for chests around the map, there's a link in the doobly-doo that takes you to an interactive world map detailing all of the known chest locations that were found by other players, and believe me, there's a lot, so you'll be kept busy for a long time. Okay, we're in the home stretch, just a few more to go. While you wish for new units, you'll have gathered a stash of Masterless Stardust. This can also be used to purchase Mora and a lot of it. Open the shop and click Paimon's Bargains, then head on over to the Stardust Exchange, and you'll have access to, again, two selections of Mora. The first one costs 10 Stardust for 10,000 with a monthly cap of 30, which is, you know, 300,000, while the other is an unlimited supply of 10,000 that costs 20 Stardust. There's also a bunch of Enhancement and Ascension materials if you feel too lazy to farm them manually. I can understand that this method isn't as readily available to free-to-play players since you don't get that much Stardust as a person who spends money, but even through your free pulls you should get quite a bit, and I personally prioritize Mora over anything else. Well, maybe you might want to buy the adventurer's experience, but Mora to me is a little bit more important to come by, just a matter of preference. Last one is not commonly well known because everyone is usually using them for enhancements, but artifacts can actually be dismantled from Mora. Not a lot mind you, but if you're carrying a lot of artifacts, no doubt from your chest travels, you can throw away a whole bunch for some spare change. That being said, chances are you're using artifacts as enhancement fodder anyway, so similar to Leyline Outcrops, I'd only really recommend this if you're in a pinch and you need cash right this instant or if you have nothing else to enhance at the current moment. And that about wraps it up for all the easy sources of Mora. Obviously there are other ways such as farming mobs, commissions, or adventure rank rewards, but you do those anyway so I didn't think it was necessary to explain them. One more thing, I went ahead and added some links in the video description if you still need more material to look at. But I hope this was helpful to those who needed it and entertaining to those who wanted it, and if I missed any easy sources of Mora, please let me know in the comments section below. Guys, if you'd like to support the channel, best way you can do so is to leave a like, comment, and share this video with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe for more content and join my Discord server if you want to play and chat with other players. Links are all down below. But for now, that's going to be it for today. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon for the next video. Take care.